so you didn't know exactly why. So it's important to know why, because especially at the level you guys are playing at, a lot of people are going to say free pawn, and you got to know how to punish them for it. So, okay. So white was not silly. So what what move should white play here? Let's go to that now. So what should white play here? <laughs> TC. Plank length band. Okay, you guys are looking at the wrong pieces. You guys are looking at the wrong pieces. This pawn, no, there's no past pawns. There are no past pawns in this position. No pawn is passed. You guys are looking at the wrong pieces. Uh, wrong, wrong pieces. You guys are all looking at the wrong pieces. These pawns are on good squares. This pawn's on a good square. What piece is not on a good square? What piece is not on a good square? If Mini were here, he would say g3 with the idea of king g2, king f3, but Mini's not here, so. Uh, do you guys say the queen? You're wrong. The queen is on the right square. It's actually this guy. So where does he want to be? Does he want to be on B1 or does he want to be on C1? C1? You sure? Not B1, open file? How many like B1? How many like C1? It's one of the two. It's one of the two. Which one? B1 or C1? See a lot of B1s? I see a lot of C1s. Half of you get dunce caps, half of you get gold stars. It's not really a gold star move, but... Okay, so the right move indeed is rook to c1, okay? So why c1 over b1? This is an open file, right? The problem is this open file you have no prospects on because all the squares are covered. This is covered, this is not a square you want to go to, this is covered, this is covered, right? So even if you somehow open this file, you have no prospects on it. However, you have to anticipate what's going to happen in the position. And rook c1 is correct because what's going to happen is either this pawn will be exposed or that this file will open after pawn takes, pawn takes. Either way, you're going to want this rook on this file. So more than looking at what's currently happening, a lot of times in chess you have to think about what's going to happen. And if you think about what's going to happen, it'll be clear that the rook belongs on c1. So if you're not familiar with this type of structure, a lot of times pawn takes, pawn happens, and a lot of times this pawn becomes weak. So in both cases, you'd want to have the rook on c1, OK? So C1, gold star, B1, no, no dunce cap, but it's just, you have to be familiar with the opening, so. Okay. So now black played E6. So what should white play here? What should white play here? He's developed this rook. He's got his pawns on the good squares. He's got his bishops on the good squares. What now? What now? This is the key point in the game, guys. Key point. You've, you've, you've played your opening. You've got a great center. You've got perfect development. All your pieces are where they want to be. Now the question is, what do you do? Now the question is, what do you do? This is a gold star move, guys. Gold star move. Gold star move. So first person to get it gets a gold star. First person to get it gets a gold star. Oh, they do, Yaran. They do. If you, if you understand why this move is good, you're well on your way to becoming a good player. So, first person to get it. First person to get it. Heh. <laughs> 
chess cube background. 100,000 cubits for the first person who gets it. 100,000 cubits. Let's go. 100,000 cubits. Okay. Just kidding about the cubits, but... All right. So... I tricked you guys. Okay? I tricked you guys. The right move is pawn takes pawn. So j -Po got it, but he was just guessing. So he doesn't get a gold star. The right move is pawn takes pawn. So the question is, why is pawn takes pawn good here? And it wasn't good last move. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Why is this good here now? Yeah, exactly. Hop a pants. Very good. That's exactly why. That's exactly why. Yeah. So I kind of glossed over this e6 move. But it actually was not a very good move. Why? Because now the point is... Now you don't have time for queen c7 because I'm attacking your rook. And this tempo is absolutely vital. Absolutely vital. So one tempo can mean the difference between a dubious move and a good move. So if you didn't find pawn takes pawn in this position, don't feel bad. Because white in this position, you know how long it took him to find pawn takes pawn? 54 minutes it took before he decided on pawn takes pawn, okay? 54 minutes. So, and, Bla and white was a strong grandmaster. Of course, any computer would play pawn takes pawn in three seconds because he sees, oh, free pawn. But it took a grandmaster 54 minutes to calculate that black would not have sufficient, comp sufficient compensation, okay? So it, it's tricky. It's tricky. But the key point is that e6 uncovered this diagonal so that after pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, you get a free tempo. All right. So what should black have done? Black should probably have taken first, then played e6. So e6 is a good move to stop these d5 ideas and stop the expansion in the center. But he should have taken first so that he doesn't hang a pawn. OK. So e6, pawn takes was played. 54 minutes, though, guys. So like I said, don't feel bad. But I tricked you a little bit. OK. So now. Of course, pawn takes, bishop takes pawn, you lose the tempo. So now queen c7 first. And of course, pawn takes, like I said, pawn takes. OK, now what? Now what? OK, another star move, guys. Another star move here. But this is all, this is all strategic star moves. This is all strategic star moves. So if you guys listen to what I said earlier, you would know what the right move is here. If you guys listen to what I said earlier, you would know what the right move is here. So this is a type of thing that, for example, I see Goose missing a lot. Yeah. So a couple of you got it. A couple of you got it. So those of you who said c4, very good. c4 is the right move. Okay, why is c4 so important to play here? The problem is if you don't play c4, like say you play rook b1, for example, the problem is after knight c4, there's a bind on white's position. Now this pawn is weak, this pawn is weak, this pawn is weak, and black has an excellent position here. Excellent position. So you, you can't allow a bind. The point is, you don't want to allow the knight the c4 square. OK? So you play c4 to keep the knight out of c4 and keep these pawns fluid so that you can push them. But if you allow this knight to get the c4, then all these pawns suddenly become blockaded. Yeah. So, But it's vital. I know, I know I'm right, Goose. I know. But th this, is, this is crucial. You have to play it now. Because if you don't play it now, you're never going to get a chance to play it. Because once I get my knight onto the c4 square, you're never going to be able to do anything about it. So, I mean, I can't stress this enough. Like, the difference between allowing knight c4 and not allowing knight c4 is huge. 
It's absolutely Gore Vidal. It is absolutely Vidal. Okay, so C4. Good move, okay? So now he's just going to try to develop his pieces, try to target this pawn, so he plays Bishop A6. Alright, so now what does white do? Now what does white do? Okay, the thing is, the thing is, this pawn is actually being attacked, right? I'm attacking it three times, and you're only defending it twice. So that's something to keep in mind. Just something to keep in mind. So this is another star move. This is another star move. And this is one that I was surprised that Goose mentioned before, because he doesn't like the forward knight moves. But not a single person managed to get the right move, which is knight d4. Yeah. Knight d4 is a star move. Yeah, c5 is actually very bad. c5 is not good. Can someone tell me why c5 is not good? Problem with C5, actually, believe it or not, is something even more sinister than Rook D8, which is B5. And now look what you've look what you've done. Look what you've done. You've allowed the knight to get C4 all over again. Okay, and now this pawn's going to get blockaded, and this pawn and this pawn's going to be, be cut off from the rook. And I'm going to get a, either a pass pawn on c4 or a dominant knight on c4. So c5, you, you guys are, are rushing to kill your positions. I don't know why you're doing that. Yeah. So knight d4. Yes. So now you're stopping b5, controlling the square. So now, Black, after his own hour plus think, decides, all right, well, I'm going to lose if I don't do this, so I'll do it. Bam. Knight takes e4. So how are we going to how are we going to counteract this? Uh, this insouciant knight move? So there, there are pins and things. Don't forget. So, so what should we do first? What should we do first? So indeed, when there's one pin, why not create two? So indeed, Queen to e2. Protecting d3 and now creating a second pin. So now this guy's pinned every which way. He's pinned along the diagonal, pinned along the file. Okay? But of course, black can defend that, right? Look at c8. Okay? So this guy's defended now. 